Hi guys, welcome to the final video of the Bath Saw Club Virtual Beginners course. Before we hear from Tim Mars, our lead coach, I just want to take this opportunity to go through some of the different disciplines in fencing. In fencing there are three different disciplines, three different swords you can choose from. They don't mix, they play against the, you play against the same sword. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to talk you through the differences between the weapons. Bath Sword Club is a three weapon club, so that means that we facilitate and we coach all three of the weapons and you can choose which one you would like to do when you come to the club. So the first is the one we have been simulating throughout this course and it's the foil. So the foil here is about a meter long it's quite light, it's quite small, it's got a very thin blade and it has a quite a small guard to protect the hand. It's a thrusting weapon, which means we're hitting with the point of the sword. The, sword, the point of the sword is how we score the points, not with the edge of the sword. This sword derives from the classic short sword and would have been used as a practice weapon to train nobles how to, how to fight and uh, with a rapier. It was then developed into the fencing sword you see here, the foil, and it is usually used to help train beginners to learn how to fence, but is an extremely popular weapon in, in its own right at the highest level. The target for the foil is the torso. So to score a point in the foil, you want to be hitting the torso of the body. So the arms, the head and the legs do not count as a point. You want to be hitting the torso of the body only. So that requires quite a bit of accuracy and skill to hit. Foil, is also, foil also has a rule called priority and this dictates who in the fight can score the point at any one time. We're not going to go into that today because it can get a little confusing but when you start fencing you'll see what I mean. It dictates the ebb and flow of the fight so that you can't both hit each other, both score a point. Right, next we have the Epe. As you can already see, it's bigger than the foil. It's heavier, it's got a thicker blade and a much, much, much bigger guard here. Again, like foil, the epée is a thrusting weapon. You can only score by hitting with the tip of the blade, not with the edge. But unlike foil, there is no priority rule. If you hit them, you get a point. And in addition, unlike foil, everywhere on the body counts as target, from the tip of your head, to your wrist and your hand, to your foot and your toe, all counts as target. It's very much hit and don't get hit. This creates a very tactical game of bluff and counter bluff that is very effectively used in uh, fences repertoires. The other thing you'll notice that's different about this one is it's got slightly more bigger blade, a V-shaped blade, and this is more rem reminiscent of the rapier blade that would have been used in duels to settle arguments. Now the third and final weapon is the sabre. The sabre looks very different from the other two and plays very differently as well. The first thing you'll notice is it has a nice straight blade but it also has this curved guard. Again this is to protect the hand, the fingers from a swiping blade. Unlike the other two, this is a cutting weapon. This means you are hitting with the edge of the sword rather than the tip of the sword. You are able to hit with the tip as well, but you're primarily trying to hit with the edge of the sword. So it's more of a cutting weapon. The target area for this weapon is anywhere from the waist upwards. So you can hit the torso, the body, the arms, and the head. And those are your three main targets if you're doing sabre. Sabre is very much short, sharp, and fast. It's all about quick movement and quick decisions. Like foil, it has a priority system, a priority rule, dictating who can score the point at any moment. Very, very, very similar to the foil. 
Now the sabre, as you can probably guess by its name, is derived from the cavalry sabre. It's got this nice curved guard to protect the hand and would have been used on horseback. Now the rule for the target area for the sabre, from the waist upwards, comes from this. You're not going to be hitting the legs because you might risk hurting the horse. So that's where the rules for the target area of sabre come from. As I mentioned earlier, Bath Sword Club is a three weapon club and caters for all three weapons and is probably one, one of the largest three weapon clubs in the country and definitely one of the most successful. So we'll have some closing words from our lead coach, Tim Miles, but I hope to see you down at the club very soon. So there we are. I hope you've had as much fun watching and practicing as we've all had making these videos for you. Uh, if you want to know more about us or you want to find out how you sign up for an actual beginner's course when we get around to running them, then check out our website or our Facebook page. Maybe even send us a message or send us a video of you practicing. It'd be really good to see. So until we meet at the club, take care. See you soon.